very few manual cutting tools are as efficient as the splitting axe in mall. Although we have many types of machinery to serve the same purpose, the popularity of manual cutting tools isn't likely to fade away anytime soon. Splitting axe and maul are the two most common wood cutting tools specialized for splitting wood more appropriately than any other type of axes. Despite serving the same purpose, the tools have their fair share of differences. To ensure that you can pick up the right tool, we will discuss splitting axe vs. Splitting maul differences based on the features, types, and uses. So, without wasting any time, let's dive right in. A splitting axe features a long wood handle and a narrow, tapered head that break apart the wood fibers instead of cutting the wood grains. The head is made heavy so that the pressure can concentrate on the blades and strike the wood harder and penetrate deeper. You can find splitting axes from hundreds of brands in different sizes and materials in the marketplace. Iron, steel, and copper are the most common material used to make the blades of splitting axes. As the name suggests, this tool is also used to split the wood fibers. A splitting maul has a long wooden handle and a very heavy wedge-shaped head used for cutting and hammering. Mauls are more suitable for splitting relatively large and thick wood lumps. The head of a maul is longer and less tapered than any other cutting tool. Although most common blades are wedge-shaped, Semi-wedge and conical blades are also becoming popular nowadays. Mauls are sometimes called sledgehammers because of the blunt hammer-like pole side, as both the tools have striking similarities in their appearance. Many people use the terms axe and maul interchangeably. No matter the popular opinion, the tools are very different in their features and functions. Below we have rounded up the most notable dissimilarities between the splitting and maul so that you can identify the tools within seconds. Let's have a look. If you're in a hardware store trying to figure out which axe-like tool is a maul, Pick the tool and measure the weight. A maul is far heavier than any axe. The big metal made hammerhead adds to the overall weight of a maul. Generally, a splitting maul weighs from 6 pounds to 8 pounds. As for the splitting axe, the weight usually varies from 3 pounds to 6 pounds. Because of the lightweight, most people prefer splitting axes for cutting regular firewood for camping or burning in a fireplace. The head design is another key feature to differentiate between the two tools. Splitting axes have a sharper and less heavy head compared to a maul. Usually, the head of a splitting axe is divided into three parts, cutting edge or bit, blade, and eye. A tapered cutting edge pierces straight into the wood while the blade digs deeper into the fibers. Then we have the eye portion that connects the head to the handle and prevents the axe from popping out. On the opposite side of the blade, the splitting axe is completely flat, which means you can't use the head for hammering tasks. Most axe heads are made from steel, iron, or copper and feature a stainless steel coating to prevent rust. On the other hand, mauls can be identified by their long fat, and blunt heads. You can instantly recognize the maul head from the wedge-like shape and a very short cutting edge. The blade and the pole side have more of a hammer shape to drive a nail inside the wood. For improved strength, the maul head is made from heavy-duty iron. This blunt head strikes the wood with excessive force that breaks the wood apart parallel to the wood grains. Splitting maul heads has twice as much weight as the splitting axe heads. In case you can't spot the tools from their weight and head design, check out the handle size. Splitting mauls have longer handles to balance the weight of the head and the shaft. The handle also helps to detach the blade from a wood log easily. As the long handle is further away from your lower body, chances of injury are reduced. Typically, the maul handles are made from fiberglass, plastic, or metal to provide sufficient support to the heavy head. On the contrary, splitting axe handles are mostly made from wood or composite materials. Composite handles are generally more long-lasting and lightweight than wooden and metal handles. Axe handles are a few inches shorter than splitting mauls. Try to compare the tool with your arm's length. If the tool has the same length as your arm, that's surely an axe, not a maul. Because of its lightness, the splitting axe is frequently used for splitting wood. The small handle and compact head make it easier to strike the wood with less force so that you don't have to face frequent hand fatigue. Some splitting axes have slightly curved, oval-shaped handles so that you can have a strong and safe grip over the handle. Additionally, you can use the splitting axe for performing many chores other than cutting wood. Mauls are extremely helpful to split the heaviest and thickest wood manually. The extra weight makes it easier to dig deep into the wood. One strike of the splitting maul for some soft wood is enough to tear it into two pieces. However, the heaviness causes muscle fatigue, and after a while, you might become exhausted. Also, you have to put extra force to split the wood properly. That's why mauls are mainly used for handling the heaviest wood. Now you know the splitting axe vs maul differences as per their most obvious features. We understand the temptation to buy any axe-like tool for splitting firewood. But those tools might eventually leave you completely frustrated as only the splitting tools can do the job right. Opt for a splitting axe if you want to split wood regularly with the least effort. Otherwise, pick the heavy and blunt splitting maul for neatly splitting even the hardest loved ones.